Welcome to the Aubrey Marcus podcast with my brother. Now, I say brother to a lot of different people. You know, it's kind of like just like my dude, you know, my friend. But when I say it about this dude, I actually mean it. He is my fucking brother. Not biologically, of course. <laughs> <laughs> just to be even more confusing. But, uh, but man, one of my best friends in the world. I can't believe we haven't done a podcast before. I know. It's, it's a shame. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Makai Brooks, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been long overdue. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure. It's my fault, really. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to yeah, it. Yeah, when it comes down to it, yeah, blame me. Yeah. And yeah, and, and yeah, this this is my brother. This really is my brother. We, we, we choose our family. And yeah. Aubrey's my brother. Hell yeah. So we met like we met when you were still on uh, uh, True, True Blood. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. And I was watching the show then. That was when the show was pretty good. Yeah. Show was great. Show the show was good then. And you played the character Eggs. Yep. And I remember we had some wild ass Christmas party. You did. Was, you did. Don't yeah, put me I in did. that. Don't put me in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> You had a wild ass I Christmas. meant we is in not the you part of we, but I had this wild ass Christmas party. And then at some point you roll up mm -hmm. and for, for whatever reason, it was just kind of like normal. Even though I like knew you as a TV character, I was like, ah, right. oh, fucking eggs is at the house. It's <laughs> like, that's weird. Right. But at that point, everything was normal. And, but, and you, but you were really cool. Yeah. Like a lot of people weren't, aren't, aren't that cool. Like, so I was like, oh, this guy's not a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, you want a drink, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then that's where it started, and that was shit like seven, eight years ago, right? Yeah, it's, it's at least. You know, just coming home for uh, for Christmas in Austin, It's you, you, sometimes you meet good people, sometimes you meet great people, you know? And that was that was one of those situations. Yeah. So And so from there, I mean, we've gone off um, from Peru to all over the world to yeah. just hanging out. And one of the things that... You know, obviously, you've accomplished a lot. You were an athlete, as I was. We actually crossed paths playing basketball in high school. Didn't even didn't and, know each other then. And I'll say that he was he was a formidable opponent. <laughs> Aubrey can ball, man. Don't, don't don't let don't let the size fool you. Boy can shoot, play some defense. Yeah. That's what all the ladies tell me. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So so we crossed paths and didn't know each other then. But then, uh, you know, then obviously we reconnected. And I think one of the things, you know, besides everything you've accomplished from modeling to acting, all that's all good. But you're an individual similar to me in that you like to push the boundaries of both how far you can go spiritually and how mm -hmm. far you can go in this kind of physical world. Right. And, and I right. think that's that's something that you don't see that often, like someone who's really trying yeah. to expand that spectrum to the broadest sense. And I think that's one of the reasons we get along so well. Yeah, it's it's you know uh, that path really started for me, um, you know, like I mean, around the time I met you, like I, I mean, I, I've always been interested in spirituality. I've always been interested in human optimization, as you put it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I've also, I had some experiences in my life. I had a um, a parasite in Africa that 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 flatlined me, that took my life, you know. And so, like, literally, your vital signs went flat. Done. Boop, beep, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had that experience of, I, I, I've only read a couple other people's experiences like that, but I had I had a very interesting experience that I, that I remember uh, quite vividly, and haunted me for a long time. And that was uh, that was uh, May twentieth, uh, May twentieth, two thousand nine, and. Uh, that was right before I met you, right? Around the time. Yeah. I think I met you Christmas of 2009. Yeah. And then uh, May 20th, 2010, I was in India, you know, on my spiritual grind. And like, and I had this Nadi reader. Nadi is a, is, a, is a scroll, an ancient scroll written in Sanskrit and then translated into ancient Tamil, which is then translated into Tamil, which is then translated into English that have my name on it. And... Uh, but not just like your name, like it had Abraham or some shit on there. Makad, <laughs> yeah, on it, and it was written a few thousand years ago, right? And it talked about my my whether you believe in this or not. I was sitting right there, and we have a video. Like I'm, we we shot a documentary about the whole thing, and uh, I, they talked about my last blood, which is the last life that, that you lived, and it, it, you know, it said it was in India. And then uh, it talked about what I'm supposed to do in this life, and that also, and it corresponded to everything that I'd always thought since I was a kid. And um, as I'm leaving, this this naughty reader, and this is this is May twentieth, uh, two thousand ten. He says, "Be careful driving." I go, oh, "Okay." And I I mentioned something about that earlier. 
May 20th, 2012, or sorry, May 20th, uh, uh, 2011, I'm sitting at a stoplight in Atlanta. And, and the, the crazy part is, this is always around 6 p.m. on May 20th. And I get hit by a car. And I'm, uh, uh, um, a car hit me going head on and uh, put me into a pretty quick, like I lost consciousness and, and it was a bad situation. And I had, I had brain swelling and I had a lot of things uh, happen in my life that, um, you know, sort of, it, it, it put me back in the space of like, okay, if, I, if, if this is it, what have I done? Yeah. Like, and I think, I think, am I ready to die? Right. And, and am I and, ready to cross that threshold, you know, and, or would it be a shame? Right. And no, none of us are ready to die at 28, you know, 29. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one's <laughs> yeah, ready yeah, to die yeah. at that. But at the same time, it, it wasn't about the years. It was about how I used that time. It right. was more about how, did I do what I was supposed to do? Did I, did, I, did, I, did I listen to the universe, that quiet little voice that's always saying the same thing? So after that, I just stopped asking questions. I just stopped asking questions. And then May 20th, 2012 is when I began my journey with earth medicine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I, and that started around like, you know, I started prepping for that journey around six o'clock. <laughs> so... And it's kind of my half birthday. My birthday is October twenty fifth, May May five twenty, and ten twenty five. Haven't done the haven't done the uh, numerology yet, but I'm I'm figuring it out. Cool. So I'm not hanging with you on May twentieth. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna <laughs> no. let you ride that one out by yourself. <laughs> Listen, just in case you know there's some collateral damage. Of what's going, of what's Everybody's going. been just fine. <laughs> Everybody who's with me's been just fine. But, but I, I I consider that my spiritual birthday because it's like. I was able on May twentieth, twenty twelve. I was able to thank the universe for all my May twentieth, right? Yeah. I was able to thank the universe for the parasite, for the car accident, for the the thing that blew my crown chakra off the top of my head in India when he when when I, when he told me what my old name was and I said it out loud myself. My ears yeah. were like, "Wait, that's off limits, bro. You can't say that name." Yeah. We, we we discussed that, right. <laughs> and um, you know, I've had some pretty interesting experiences that have made me. Uh, just not give a shit if people think spirituality is cool. Like I don't, I don't care what you think. I don't care if it's not because you cool felt thing it. You felt it directly. You yeah, know? and I think that's yeah. the big difference when you go that deeply and you experience it yourself. Yeah, it becomes a different thing. And and I think you know now with the perspective, you can look back at. I mean, you had a pretty wild run leading up to those accidents. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Calvin Klein model, all the different things that yeah. you were accomplishing at that point, partying, girls, that whole thing. Right. You were you were excelling in that category of life right. but sometimes at that point when there's another aspect of your life that needs to get brought in and your momentum is pushing the other way you know the universe will bench you yeah and that's really it's like it's like sit down sit down son you're gonna sit this one out for a little bit and reevaluate you know you're yeah. shooting crazy shots yeah. and you're making you're, them you're making you're making some of them yeah you're making you're like it's like kobe's last game yeah, yeah you hit 60 but you took 50 shots <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah. sit down and and we're gonna bench and give you some time to reevaluate right. and that right. and then you can be grateful for that at the time. And that's yeah. <clears throat> you know, one of those things like that old Stoic philosophy, like in Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle is Away, those things become great blessings, but at the time right. they're they're curses. I mean, you got a fucking parasite, you got in a car accident. I remember actually right when you got that car accident, that was right before I did my first ayahuasca trip. Because mm -hmm. that was the time where I got my fucking crown chakra blown off the top of my right. head the first right. time i overcame the fear of death but the second one was when i entered that dimension where i could like move shit and see mm -hmm. shit and then i came and one of the the most crazy incidents was that time because i was able to go in and check on you at that point i was like yeah. man i wonder how my boy's doing yeah man. And i was like looking around in your ribs and i was like looking around in your head i was like oh he's gonna be fine sweet and it's, yeah. it's i've never really done that on plant medicine before like really traveled in and like checked somebody checked somebody else's out but it was it was so easy at that point it was like yeah. a skill that we always had just didn't have the technology to access anymore yeah i was talking to my parents about this last night and 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 uh, i told my dad i just looked at him in the eye and i said i said you know things that you can't explain and like you, you know things that you don't even know why you know them. And he looked at me like, well, how'd you know that? <laughs> kind of like, he's like, yeah, well, you know, but I was like, no, don't make it humble because it's not even yours. It's, it's something that you're remembering from, from your spiritual existence. Like your spirit has a memory, you know? And uh, you, like you're saying, there, there's a data field where all this stuff exists and you can access people and you can access their thoughts and you can access ideas. And I'll, I often I, I ask people, I, say, I, I ask them, where do ideas come from? 
And I go, oh, your mind. They go, no. <laughs> they enter your mind, but where do they come from? And then like it kind of stumps people. And I go, wait, so how can you not believe in spirituality? How can you not believe in this data field that you're referring to? If you don't even know where your own ideas come from, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like where where does this thing, where does this consciousness that creates matter come from? Yeah, and like you know, it's just it's a it's, it's an interesting concept uh, that I think, I think should be the, explored. The person who describes it really well, I think, is Rupert Sheldrake, who talks about the morphic resonance field, which is the place. It's basically that dimension where we're all connected. So species right. have their own resonance field. Mm -hmm. So humans do, mm -hmm. and then the Earth does, and they're all kind of like this Venn diagram of overlapping right. resonance fields right. that you have. And um, <clears throat> and I really like that way, and it explains a lot of things as well, like having this other dimensional connection right. because anything from certain quantum physics elements, like quantum entanglement, for mm -hmm. example, like. How does when this photon switches directions, this other one across the world switch directions instantly? How does that even make sense? There's not enough time for there to send, like, beam a particle in right. this reductionist kind of mindset. Right, like, right. how did this one communicate with that one through matter? It's not possible. It is, it's the same one. Yeah, it's yeah. the same one. And it's yeah. the... And it's connected through another another field, another field. And, and so I you can tattooed so, right here actually yeah so you, that, you, <laughs> <laughs> so you bring that you so you bring that down and so that makes sense in that way and so then some people in science can kind of get on board I think everything's right. basically the point is everything's bridging and then you look at some of these phenomenon where a same species of animal will learn something in two distinct places at the same time like they'll I hadn't, just, I hadn't heard of that oh, yeah, yeah so like this Rupert Sheldrake talks about this species of birds and it was in England at the time mm -hmm. and they used to deliver cream in those old milk jugs right where it was actually cream on top and they had a certain type of lid on the cream jar and at the same time in a variety of different cities way too fast for because they were doing this for years and years and then this bird was like a magpie or a grackle one of the common birds there mm. At the same time, in multiple cities across across all of all of England, the birds figured out how to peck through the peck through the cardboard and get the cream. Mm. But there was no way that one bird could have gone and, and taught them. the other bird and taught right. the other bird. And There's no bird like, internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no bird internet. So it's like they were all they all learned it at the same time. It's like the I think they call it like the 99th monkey phenomenon too. It's like another thing where the species will learn, and it's because. There's layers that we're connected on, right? And we just, but we just operate on this one layer because that's where our scientific tools are most effective is in this current layer. Right. But then once you go to the spiritual dimensions, you start to access these other layers, which are just like parts of the onion that you haven't seen yet. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think it's interesting that people have trouble with this concept, even though we've created a physical reality of it. So, so for instance, the internet. Yeah. is just a physical manifestation of this morphic resonance field that you're talking about. Like it's it's if if one bird learns the information and all the birds in England learn this information, it's the exact same thing as the internet in a, in in a, in a metaphysical way, right? Yep. So it's like we we're able to create our consciousness into or matter. like an iPhone download that comes from that comes right. from this. It just beams Software. on your phone. Or like I show up, I you know show up in my Tesla. I'm like. Oh, the new interface for recent calls has changed. Yeah, software. I didn't update. do that. It just yeah. fucking happened. Software update. Software update. Yeah. And when you're connected to yeah. source, you get software updates. These exactly. birds, they right. download. They they went to sleep one night and they're just thinking, man, I, I'm hungry. I wish I could have some delicious cream. Right. And then one day, software update. Right. Like, boom! Oh, I can fucking peck oh, through this thing. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was his, that was his name. That was that was yeah. the milkman's name. Yeah. No, 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 that was the bird's name. <laughs> that was the bird's name. Yeah, got it. <laughs> He's like Bob the Grackle. Yeah. So then, how? So what's interesting though is like all right, we've been talking about the spiritual path, but what's really unique is that you haven't abandoned one in favor of the other. You know, like yeah. you're still willing yeah. to go hard in both categories. You're yeah. as comfortable in a yacht party in Monte Carlo as right. you are in, uh, you know, Maloka and yeah, yeah. the deep jungle of Iquitos. I, I, you know, and there's I'm, not I'm, that many people that are like that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a little more comfortable in the Maloka actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because be, only because of the, the, I've seen you in action. You look comfortable as shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's, that's because here's the thing. Here, here, here's what it is. Because I'm with you and people who are of like minds, yeah. that our our energy is not that aggressive unless it needs to be, right? right. Unless it's called for. Um, 
but living in LA, living in Hollywood for last, you know, I, I moved to Hollywood August 25th, 1999, 2.25 p.m., never forget it. It's aggressive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's desperate. It's parasitic It's well. parasitic, it's, it's all these different things. And like, that's not a judgment. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't judge people for being that way. I'm just observing it, right? And, and I'm not saying that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's wrong or right, I'm just saying that's what it is. And so when I say I'm more comfortable in the Maloka, it's because, uh, it's because of, 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 of the nature of, of the energy there, right? So like, mm-hmm. for instance, I just went to a yacht party a week and a half ago, and like, and these are venture capitalist guys, and we're, we're doing business together, and uh, we have so we got a really cool political app I'm doing, and it's gonna come out hopefully in, in the midterms of 2018. And um, they, these guys are great. These guys are fantastic, and they get it. They they take trips to Alaska with with Laird Hamilton, and they, they they they're they're health and wellness guys. They're you know, they they get it. They they get both sides of the coin, right? But there were some other people there, who I just had to walk away from. Like I just like sure. I I can't, man. I, I just can't. And so it's almost like. You you learn to protect your your spiritual sensitivity and your spiritual presence around aggression, but then you also learn to protect your 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 physical life and your and your and your and your ephemeral existence around people who 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 may be taking it a little too far. But here's the thing: I, here's the thing I learned. Right, I, I've been to India, and I I, I sat with with uh, swamis and ashrams, and I I I, I met with people on the south people and and and. Was it was able to stay overnight a few times with some people who who just meditate and pray all day, and that's not a life I want. No, but we need as as a human species, we need these people to balance out our, our consciousness, right? We need them yeah. to do they that. They hold down a certain spectrum of right. the morphic resonance field of right. the collective conscious. Absolutely, that, that's something I actually absolutely didn't understand until recently as well. Until right. I had that view of everybody kind of holding down their part like because right. there's going to be other people way on the opposite side oh my god you yeah. know all and that's probably the majority of the earth right now and i think that's why we're a little out of balance there's oh yeah too few people yeah. <laughs> just meditating and accessing their yeah. highest consciousness and too many people numbing their consciousness mm-hmm. with drugs alcohol parties distractions whatever else right. Any, anything kind of, that numbs their, their emotional state yeah, yeah exactly so yeah so you definitely need need both sides but you know i, I think it's also it gets it gets actually kind of gnarlier, particularly when you're in LA. Mm. The bigger you get, because then you create like a gravitational disturbance, right? Where you're at, because <laughs> I love that phrase. That's a great phrase. <laughs> because people because people people see you as oh, man. I of, you. of what they can what you can bring to them, and yeah. then it it yeah. ignites these certain elements of their lust and greed and it's insecurity tough. and shit. So you'll actually manifest a lot of times the worst of people you know because your disturbance you'll come in and it'll be like this ecosystem and all of a sudden there's a big ass planet and everybody's just getting like whoa i'm getting sucked into this into this thing it's not even anything you're trying to do it's just what they're projecting it's a force force of the universe right and then unless somebody's really grounded like and they don't need these things and they're not coming at you like oh what can this person do for me they're just like oh look look at this interesting human who just walked in here like this is awesome then it becomes then it becomes an interesting issue. But in LA, people are so ungrounded that all of a sudden these gravitational forces come in and everybody just gets fucking twacked. Like, I, I wrote this poem years ago, maybe maybe twelve years ago, about that. And I was like, well, how do you find your footing in a place where the ground literally moves, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I use the word literally wrong because it should be actually. <laughs> I, hate, I hate when people do that. <laughs> but where do you find your footing in a place where the ground? actually moves right yeah. plate tectonics like la the ground actually moves and, and so like i think that's a cool metaphor for you know or analogy like how do, how do you really how do you find your footing there it's a hard place to find your footing and so i don't blame people like i mean i've i've had months a better part of years where I, I felt lost better part of years where i leaned on other things too much i leaned on the ephemeral existence or numbing my pain uh drugs and alcohol whatever the case was that that i thought was the key, but I, but what I realized was, the key is balance, mm-hmm. meditation. Like even if it's something simple, like a job of meditation that I learned from a Westerner named Wayne Dyer, right, mm-hmm. on, a, on, a, on an audio book, right, where it's just the sound of creation, uh, um, just just the sound of Jabba. 
and you do that 10 to 15 minutes in, in, in the morning and then you and then you talk about all the things that you're grateful for to yourself for five minutes and all of a sudden you've now created an energy field and a gravitational field around yourself where I walk into a room and my and my word was patience and or clarity or whatever the case was and I walk into a room and I'm patient and I and, I, and I've, I've actually structured my energy that morning and no matter what you do you're gonna run up against my patience. Right. No matter what you do, no matter what you try to say to me, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you're running up against my patience. Yeah. And so what I figured out is it's, it's actually, I'm, ha I'm happier and it's, it's cool to be spiritual and ephemeral. It's our birthright. Yeah, it's man, our, I it's mean, really it's, cool. It's we're, very, we're very blessed. We're it's very 100% blessed. our all, yeah. all human's birthright to experience all these things. I really look at it like we got together in the collective as God or the collective or whatever you want to say and like said, oh, let's create the coolest fucking video game ever, ever. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play as 8 billion people and a million other organisms right. all at the same time. Right. Everybody's going to have their right. own thing. Right. They're not going to know it's a game. So right. they're going to play it for real. You right. can play as the good guy. You can play as a bad guy. Right. You can play in the middle. You Matter of fact, go you're, going to, yeah, you're, you're going, going to play as everything. all of them. Yeah. You can and you can you get to live all of these different roles and right. all these characters and you're gonna have like great resistance. You're gonna have resistance equal to your best effort because that's the way the duality of the universe that we're gonna set up is resistance equal to your best effort because it's gonna come from within you. It's gonna be part of the balance of the universe. So you have this game that's never gonna get old, has infinite myriad possibilities, mm -hmm. and that's what we're that's what we're playing now. But right. the Sims. It's it, man. It's it. Yeah. But I think it's cool to think of it like that because then you realize like so many people, you run into kids and things are kind of disenfranchised or mm -hmm. bummed out. It's like we created this video game, mm -hmm. like all of us. If we look at it like that, yeah. we created this game. Why not just play it? Like take some of the stress about it. It's not that, it's not that right. serious. Yeah, try your best. There's other players that do matter and that, that hold love. Like do your best to help out your fellow players. Of course. But – Play the fucking game. Play it yeah. all the way. Experience yeah. all the things that you can experience. Like, don't defend your little niche based upon your ego. Just play it. Play the roles that you have available. I I, I like to liken it to this. Um, I, I I have this quote that I kind of say to myself, and I say to to loved ones who are very close to me, "Life is not meant to be lived. It's meant to be observed." And when you can observe life, life itself has a consciousness. Life itself is an organism, if you want to put it that way. It's a light body. And if you can observe your sort of Gemini existence with that, with that consciousness, if you can observe it, you're above it. It's so huge, especially when you have a big emotional reaction. Like right. Let's say you're all twisted or jealous about something. Mm -hmm. The minute you can go... Which is natural. Sometimes yeah, it's, it's natural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the minute you go, oh, look. The Aubrey's all angry and shit. <laughs> you start to laugh at yeah. yourself. You go, about the, what? Man, <laughs> about what am I the, so mad about? The Aubrey is depressed today. <laughs> you know, and then you're like, why is the Aubrey depressed today? Right. No, oh, no, the Aubrey's concerned about this trivial bullshit. Absolutely. And you're like, oh man. You're like, Wait, but I did, I did I die though? Did I die? Did the Makai die though? <laughs> yeah. Did he die yeah, though? Exactly. No. And then it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much shit we look back and we were so worried about. Like right. these things, sleepless nights and stressed. Yeah. And it was, I can't even remember those shits. Like Bro. those were a long, <laughs> there's like innumerable number of them. It's, incre it's crazy. It's crazy. It, 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 here's the thing. Once again, I, 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 and I try to tell it to people and I go, y you're, you don't understand how powerful you are. Yeah. Like you think that you can't be positive. You think you can't create your own reality, but you're doing it anyway. <laughs> you, yeah. you, like you have the option of looking at things positively or negatively. And nine times out of ten, especially in the Western world, uh, with our first world problems, we look at them negatively, and we just go. And then, but we don't realize that that's creating a cycle, right? So it's like I, I learned that if I can be grateful for, quote unquote, the worst days of my life. Right. Then I learned the lesson so much faster. For instance, to put it in Christian terms, we have Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it, historically speaking, and anthrop anthropologically speaking, Good Friday was a pretty fucked up day. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty bad day for Jesus. You know, it's a yeah. pretty bad day for a lot of people. Right. But we call it Good Friday because of what happened Sunday. Right. So you can be like, oh well, you know, my Friday's pretty screwy. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? There's gonna be a Sunday. And, and you just have to sort of understand that your life is not about the 24 hours in that Friday. Yeah. 
So it's it's just um, I agree, man. We're just agreeing with it. <laughs> yeah, like a, I love festive consciousness <laughs> and ideas. Well, Orlando's getting bored over here. <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice, you got nice teeth, bro. Who's your dentist? Nice. Oh, sweet. You're a dentist? That's the weirdest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pizza crust that keeps oh, his, okay. keeps his teeth. It Listen, his hey, teeth extra bite. I love pizza. <laughs> That's another topic for another, for another day. How much I love pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you noticed one of the things that I've always seen is like the more internally I work on myself and the clearer my internal gets, right. the clearer my external world gets. So yeah, that kind of absolutely. like as, as above, so below, as within, so without. So how have you seen as, as this spiritual path has become deeper and more ingrained in you, how have you seen that, you know, expand out into the external world and some of the opportunities you've had? I liken it to exercise. I liken it to the gym, right? So if you go to the gym four or five days a week and you are building your stamina and you're building muscle mass and you're, you're healthier, you feel better. And it becomes easier every time you go to the gym, you start to crave the gym, right? And you start to crave these sit-ups and you start to crave, you know, like pushing yourself beyond what you did Wednesday, now on Friday. It's the same thing. When, when, I, when I work on my spiritual body, when I work on my spiritual consciousness, I, I get addicted. I, I, I have this sort of, um, this need and this want uh, to, to, to push myself and to be better and, and to be more courageous in that and, and, and to answer more questions that I have about life itself, myself, my purpose, why am I here, why are we all here? Uh, what's the purpose of, 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 of humanity in and of itself? And the more, the more I explore that, the more simple it gets, right? And the more simple my life gets. And the less I need to be happy. And the, 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 the better shape my spiritual body is in. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the converse of that is if, if there's times, you know, here, I'll, I'll be completely honest. Supergirl's a tough job. It's, a t- it's the toughest job I've ever had in my life. Like I, I, We have 14-hour days, sometimes six days a week, and we're, I'm talking about work hours. I'm not talking about like... For those of you who don't know the backstory, Makad's now one of the leads in the hit CBS? Yeah, CBS. CBS show Supergirl, which yep. is killing it. All right, thank you, brother. And I play, I play Jimmy Olsen, which is... I, I'm the Jackie Robinson of comic books now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know I'm not a redhead, right? They're like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm a black dude with a nose ring and earrings and tattoos, right? They're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh. Good for that. But, but you can act. I'm like, great, thanks. And then I, I mean, and to their credit, and to Warner Brothers' credit, and to CBS's credit, and DC Comics, I, I, I sent out a thank you. I sent out, I, I said, you know what? You guys are just, this is, this is big. Yeah. I go, I didn't have someone to look at on television, um, in this way, like I, I was able to watch Will Smith, you know, but part of be part of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was able to watch the Cosby. I was able to watch certain things, Martin, which you know had, was a problematic, I think, um, representation. But it, but it was funny. Yeah. But at the same time, I wasn't able to look at someone in the world that I'm in, and 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 I remember when I was a kid, I was like eight or nine years old, and I dressed up like Superman, and somebody's parent goes, "You can't be Superman." I go, why? They go, because you're black. And it was one of the first times I realized that that was an issue to anybody, right? And so I, I thank them, and they go, what are you talking about? I go, well, you know, I, I don't look like the traditional Jimmy Olsen. They go, but you are Jimmy Olsen. And I go, fuck, okay. That's cool. Yeah, because it's like they're in their 40s. They're in their early 50s. They don't see it the same way that people who were running the business 10, 15 years ago. Sure. Yeah, right? it's so time it's, to it's, change. It's time to change, which is beautiful. Um, <clears throat> but like I was going to say, like on Supergirl, we have, we have crazy hours, and sometimes it's really hard to stay centered, and sometimes it, it's hard to stay focused on, on um, your spiritual wellness when you are just you're getting up at five o'clock in the morning or four thirty in the morning, you get to work and you're constantly around other people's energy. For Their projections hours. of who you are, yeah. and not only that, the yeah. inherently the job of acting is not a very grounding job. You're no. literally pretending to be somebody else, right? You know, right. which is uh, not- through someone else's filter. 
Yeah, mind exactly. You, mind you, yeah. Until you get to you know to be a certain level, and then then no one can question you. But I'm not there yet, and 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 I will be. But I'm very grateful for the job. Sure. But it's just sometimes it's hard to to you know, like uh, the 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 director of photography and I have decided that we're going to start a meditation tent at, at uh, on the job, and that uh, the first or last fifteen to twenty minutes of lunch every day, whoever wants to meditate. Not mandatory. Get your ass in here. <laughs> this stage is for that. Yeah, you know what's interesting yeah. is, is like people hear that like, oh man, tough, tough job. He's got to be an actor. He's got to be famous. So people come to come people to work say with that. me. Come people say that, but then <laughs> like when you actually look at it, like how yeah. many actors are really fucking happy? Like very fucking few. Man, so so let's what. not just put our projections about what's what. tough and what's not tough. Because I know a lot of people who were like mechanics and just work regular ass jobs that are yeah, quote happy. unquote hard yeah. and they're happy they're as happy. fuck. Right, right. And then I meet a lot of actors. No pressure. And they are not happy as fuck. So let's just ditch our own projections about yeah. what's hard and what's not hard. And let's look at the actual field of data. Right. You know, like right. people doing this job generally are less happy than people who are. You know, but it's in also, a lot it's of ways. Also, uh, uh, in defense of the job, it is chicken and egg. A, a lot of actors are fucked up people. <laughs> I mean, let's just be real. Some 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 actors come out to LA because they didn't get enough love. <laughs> some got too much love, naked. Some got <laughs> some some you know the, the dad didn't hug them enough. The dad hugged them too much. You know you know. I mean, there, there's 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 a lot of reasons why people uh, do this job. Now, if you do this job for the right reason, it can be depressing. It can be depressing because a lot of times you're doing this job and you're and you're and you're, and you're good and you're and you're and you're like I, I spent four to five days a week for three to four years in acting class, six hours a day. It's not easy, man. It's it's not rocket science. Yeah, but it's not it's not it's not easy either, right? So sure. it's like the hardest and the hardest part of acting is when you don't get a job. Sure. So you don't have a job, right? And like I, I've been very blessed, and and, and 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 I'm grateful for these blessings. But I was able to take a year and a half off, like just go like, no, nah, I don't like that. Well, they really, I don't like it. Well, this pilot, I don't like it. This movie, I don't like it. But I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want to spend six months doing that. Do you yeah. understand? And like that's 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 when you that's when you can become happy, right? That's where happier. I would say. Yeah, when you have with, when you with, don't have to take everything that comes right. your way and you can actually for right, sure that right. you have the opportunity to. But then you also run into the pitfall. I think acting has a disproportionate amount of fame to the actual job that you're doing, yeah, right? Yeah. And anytime that happens, it doesn't matter what the situation is, it can let's bring it down to the very base level. When someone's projecting something on you that you know isn't real, right? You know, then it gets weird. The dynamic is weird. So, for example, if you're a guy and you're going up to a pretty girl, like she is a fucking goddess that mm -hmm. erupted from the sea foam, and you're nervous and treat, huh? She's a volcanic like, vixen. She's yeah. She's gonna push. She's <laughs> like gonna simple. push you away, right? She's gonna be like, "Whoa, you are not seeing me accurately right. at all." That is Absolutely. not me. Whatever Absolutely. you're projecting is not fucking me. So I'm out of here. But when you're an actor, the whole fucking world is doing that. Man. Like every single they they person they is projecting you. yeah. like you're something that you know yeah. deep down as Absolutely. you're taking a shit and dealing with your own problems. <laughs> you know you're not that I Take thing. a lot of those. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> the, the, figure out your problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those are For great. Sure. Those are fantastic. I've had, I've had, I've had some, so, some breakthroughs of consciousness <laughs> on the toilet. Uh, often <laughs> it's fantastic it's my, yeah, it's like, you gotta get things it's, moving it's my know? thinking chair the bowels and the brain they move, they move yeah. at the same time but yeah you have to deal with that idea that the whole world looks at you differently than you know you are which is a weird yeah it's a weird thing and it's particularly strong with actors it's like yeah. the fame to money fame to skill kind of ratio mm -hmm. is the most dynamically out of out of whack and yeah. out of anything. Maybe some rock stars and movies, you know, rock stars and movie stars are kind of in that same yeah. category. But it, it's an interesting thing, and it presents a challenge. Yes, it prevent presents great benefits. You get to right. get a lot of money and travel, travel everywhere. World, and, yeah. But it also presents inherent challenges, and those are worthy of looking at. And you have to take measures to counteract those. You have to, you yeah. know, have to counteract that. And and all of us face that a little bit on social media, where post this photo, get a certain number of likes. You oh see God. people commenting. Yeah. You and, have to take measures to counteract that. And negativity is so popular. So weird. it's weird yeah. to me. It's like it's a, the, like that's why. Is, when did negativity become so popular? I don't. When did this happen? 
Or maybe it's always happened. It and now became, we just have a forum. For yeah. It? Well, now an- anonymity mm-hmm. came. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that's what allowed it because people weren't running up and t- saying that shit to people's faces. Yeah, but, I mean, but 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 we did legislate against minorities and women, and we we we, we oh sure you know, we were we, assholes. Yeah, yeah, we, we we I think I think it's always been popular. I think we just created a forum yeah. <laughs> where where yeah. it's where it's more acceptable. But to your point about this is this is funny. Like we we can lighten it up a little bit. To your point about where people think they know actors and so on and so forth. Like sometimes it's actually harder for me to get girls. Because they're like, well, you can have anybody you want. You ain't going to get me. <laughs> you, think you can have anybody. I'm like, I just said hi. We're, we, I didn't even, you were a four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to you like that. I'm, just projecting that. I was ordering yeah. a coffee. You you work here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait. I'm, oh, I'm sure that's in LA too. Because, yeah, because they're, cre- they're building up. See, so they're creating their own mm-hmm. rule th- system to accommodate for the fact that mm-hmm. they don't want to actually try because then right. it's this whole <laughs> ecosystem. It's, again, it's the gravitational field yeah. that creates disturbances and brings out weird shit. And yeah, I, I, I've actually had girls go, Well, I have a rule. I don't date actors. I go, Well, I have a rule. I don't date people with rules. So <laughs> it's a good rule. It's a good rule. <laughs> uh, as I contradict myself in the same sentence, <laughs> that's always fun. <laughs> One of the, one of the things that I think is, is I love sh- hate. That's a good one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, I just thought that was fantastic. Oh man, I lost my train of thought. But I think see one one thing that's interesting. I was based on uh, contradicting myself in the same sentence and based on rules. Yeah. Oh yeah. So cool. one thing that's interesting is like I think. Both of us have run into different things. We're both very fluid in our thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not not a lot of stuff that's like fixed. Like a rule to us is kind suggestion. of like it's a suggestion, right? right? It's a pretty because good suggestion. at any given point we can reevaluate that. New right. evidence, new thoughts, new anything can come through. But a lot of people aren't like that. They got these like hard blocks. Right. It's weird. They right? got these like things that are like stuck. Yeah. And I think for someone like us that are very fluid yeah we get we get off course way off course and do mm-hmm. weird things and think weird thoughts and get fucked up like everybody mm-hmm. but everything is kind of in motion there's nothing right. fixed there's fluidity there's yeah. fluidity to yeah. it i think it's interesting that we you know there's other people out there that get really stuck and i think that's where like particularly the earth medicines are good because right, right, that's right. one of the few things that can take something that's hard mm-hmm. like this kind of negative outlook or this thing this way of looking at the world mm-hmm. that's so fixed and just allow you to soften that a little bit, make it malleable. Yeah, and I, I mean, and here's the thing. It's funny because nothing is fixed. And it's like we experience this, this physical universe every on a daily basis. And we realized our schedules are off a little bit. You're running late. Um, there's pollen in the air, so maybe you can't go to your picnic or... Or you know, whatever. Yep. Like, like a car accident happens, God forbid. Whatever the case is, nothing is fixed. Absolutely nothing is fixed. You breathe the air; it's fluid. Water's fluid. Everything else around you is fluid. Uh, uh, metaphysical, physical, conscious-wise, like your ideas, everything. Even the things that we think are hard are, are, are fluid. Are fluid. They're in motion. Right. Perpetual atomic motion. And somehow. People are able to convince themselves that their fear, their 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 idea that they learned a long time ago that may not even be their idea. That's that's that you can't change that. I was talking to my grandmother the other day, and I posted this picture, right? Sorry, Nana, um, of her in the bed, and she's making this little face, this crazy little face, and we're kind of goofing around. I, I have her wig on and shit like that, and we're just like playing around. And I, and I posted the picture. And they got like 2,000 likes in one night. And she, and then somebody in our family was like, oh, well, you know, he posted this picture, blah, 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 blah. And um, she asked me to take it down. And then a few hours later, I said, you sure? Because a lot of people like the picture. Da-da-da. She's like, oh, I, like, I like looking my best. I'm very vain. Da-da-da. You know, I said, okay, all right. I take it down. A few hours later, she, she calls up and she's like, she starts apologizing. I go, well, why are you apologizing? She felt really bad. And I go, well, you know, she's 87 years old. I go, well, why do you feel bad? She goes, well, when I was a kid, people made me feel bad about my appearance, and I never got over that. I go, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> and we sat there, and we had a real conversation about 
fluidity of thought. Just let go of the shit that 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 you you think structures who you are, mm-hmm. right? Like if I want to be a different person, all I have to do is go. You know what? I'm not that dude anymore. Yep. That's some bad. These these are bad ideas and old ideas that I've held on to for way too long, and. I, I, I want to be a new person every six months, every three months, every day. I want to be a new person all the time, uh, which is why I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying stand-up for the first time next month. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. And music and all that. But yeah, your, yeah. your point's absolutely right. It's yeah. probably my favorite quote. No man steps in the same river twice because he's not. The, it's not the same river and he's not the same, same man. man. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Con- Aubrey Marcus <laughs> Confucius says. <laughs> so that, I mean, and that's really the truth. Like any day we can decide who we are. And I think so many times... People keep this. I think the whole idea of finding yourself mm-hmm. is based in a in a total delusion because I don't think there is any yourself. And I think it's the basis of so much spirituality and pseudo spiritual. I'm going to go on a quest to find myself. What is yourself? Yourself is life in motion. You'll mm-hmm. never be able to pin it down. This desire for as soon something, as you do, you're wrong. Sta- yeah, yeah it's, this desire to pin down old. this static thing. Mm-hmm. It's not real. So it creates this riddle that allows you to always search. I still haven't found right. myself yet. Yeah, motherfucker, you never will. Yeah, yeah. Because you're always changing. <laughs> there is no yourself. Your life in perception, right. in motion, right. always. And I think we cling to this. I think maybe we all come from a place where there is there is a constant, you know, like constant love or constant right. that right. we come from that place. So we cling to it in life. But the harder we cling, it just means our fingers are going to get broken. Right. You know, if we're holding on it, because right. time right. Exactly. is like this current that we can't resist. It's going to rip everything we cling to away from us. Right. So why cling? Just understand that we are in motion. We are someone different today than yesterday. And that's cool. Right. And not judge it. Like if sometimes I'm at this spiritual conscious peak and then another time I'm like wicked depressed because I still get in these funks and stuff. Yeah, we all do. You know, but before I'd be like, oh, man, here I go back to square one, fucking idiot. You know, I hadn't learned this already. It's like, no, it's just the I just got stuck in a little eddy right. in this stream. Right. And, right. and then let that go faster and just get right. faster and faster and letting it go and not being attached to even attached to my own progress and attached to all this thing. Just wake up and perceive and be life, you know, mm-hmm. instead of clinging to these identities and knowledges and all this other shit we have. I always, I always thought if, if you find yourself, you got a problem. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> cause here's the thing. If, if you find yourself, if you really truly find yourself, what you'll find is someone looking for themselves. <laughs> that's really what you're going to find. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a good thing, you know? <laughs> but um, I have this theory that... Um, that's, a, that's, that's good. Yeah, but I... I, I Thank you. I know. I have this th- <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm take, you, you guys, if you guys are, only have audio, I'm taking a bath. Um, the uh, but I have this theory that 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 our education system in the U.S. really destroys our consciousness in this in this regard. It places the importance of of being. It places the importance of education on being right. Mm-hmm. So we have this misconception that being right is valuable. It's not right. It's not true. Right. Searching, exploration, fluidity, evolutionary, an evolutionary life is not about being right. Like, for instance, I'm grateful for all the times I'm wrong. For instance, you and I have hung out a thousand times. And 990 of those times, I've learned something new. Right? And, and I go... And my ego, and at first my ego, I was like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, bro, who is this dude teaching you shit? Who the fuck is this? who do you think he is? Right? I said, that's how my ego talks. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good ego voice. I think everybody's ego yeah. talks like yeah, that. Yeah, right, right, right. Real loud and boisterous. How dare you? How dare you, motherfucker? <laughs> who you think you are? Um, and it doesn't speak English correctly either. Um, but but I, I once you get past that, I'm grateful. For the times that I'm wrong, because yeah. that means that I'm growing. That means yeah. that I'm I'm evolving. That means that I'm becoming better at what at, at this game, at this observation, right? And so, like, I just you know, I don't know. Like, I don't have any kids yet, but when I do, it might be Montessori. I don't know. It's it's really interesting because you see it from the top down in academia, you right? Know, like, like watch watch when Graham Hancock is supposed to have a debate with the Egyptologist. I'm having dinner with him. Oh, nice. On him and Danielli. 
that's awesome. Bole, Danie, Daniele Bolelli uh, on, on the 30th of May. Beautiful. We were coming up with a, a TV show together. That's awesome, man. Isn't that great? Well, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love it. Fuck yeah, I'm sure I will. Huh? Good thing it's not May 20th. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what? You know what, Sybil? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so <coughs> he's in this video, and he's about to go into this debate with his Egyptologist. Mm-hmm. Graham's uh, clearly uncovered a bunch of evidence that yeah. shows that Egypt, a lot of the monuments of Egypt was built way before right. traditional Egypt. Atlantis. But they've defended this story for so long right. that before the debate even starts, the Egyptologist freaks out, yells, storms out of the debate, and won't even have the discussion. Because he's got so much ego invested in him being right, right. about this thing. Instead of yes. looking like, Man, that's awesome new evidence. I wonder right. how that changes things. Right. Well, here's my perspective. I wonder if this, if there's a way we can meet in the middle. Everybody right. just defends, you know, defends their, their own truth, and right. because they, it becomes part of their identity. And once it's part right. of your identity, the ego protects the identity like the person protects the body. Right. You know, like oh, you're going to attack this thing. You're going to try and right. wound this thing. My identity. This is who I am. Well, I'm going to fight this right. thing. Right. Fuck who you are. You're right. nothing. Right. You're nothing. And I think and that's. I th- a, and I thought we were looking for ourselves, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. so <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if you're an Egyptologist, maybe you should keep looking, you know? Yeah. I, and I never understood that, too, about, and I, I might get in trouble for this, but, you know, what it, it is what it is. Organized religion. I always, I always talk to people. I was raised Catholic, and I, I talk to people, and I say, our, our, our spiritual consciousness and our spiritual identity is the most powerful thing that we have. Right? It is it is it is truly what keeps us going. It is what makes the clock tick. It is what puts the energy, the electricity into your heart to make it beat. It's what pumps that thing. To surrender that without research, to surrender that without uh with with just attaching your consciousness to an identity that was th- that was discovered a long time ago and then stopped is is problematic at the, at the least. And I always ask mm-hmm. people this question. I say, okay, if you need heart surgery, they had heart surgery in ancient Egypt, right? Now, we figured out a lot of organized religions, what, 2,000 years ago? The Council of Nicaea, what, 325 AD, 1,700 years ago? Would you go to a doctor who stopped studying 1,700 years ago? Or who just base, bases his information and medicine on that? Or would you go to the guy at UCLA who's got internet access? And they go, well, I'll go to the doctor at UCLA. I go, interesting that you would put your life in the hands of the person who's studying today. But you don't put your spiritual consciousness into the hands of the people who have science yeah. <laughs> and telescopes and, 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 and 1,700 more years of, of research, right? So I'm not saying that any, any, anybody's wrong. I'm just saying that the concept for me of God is is worth exploration. No doubt. And I think, you know, people see, you know, you mentioned science in the same category as religion, and people Mm. see this as a dichotomy. They see these as opposing opposites, but they're not. Because really, the whole shamanic way in the experiential spiritual way is to create repeatable experiences Mm -hmm. that you don't need to tell somebody what it is. This is a repeatable experience. For the most part, when you drink ayahuasca, you are going to have an experience that falls in this genre of category mm-hmm. of information. Yeah, it can be pretty different, right. but it's a repeatable experience. You go down with Don Howard and you drink Wachuma. Mm-hmm. You know, you're everybody there is going to be on this. They're going to feel it. It's not because you're listening to him say, right. this is what's going to happen. It's right. just what fucking happens. He doesn't even say anything. He, he doesn't just, even say anything. He doesn't anything. describe. He just goes, no. it's going to connect you. Yeah. And, you go, okay. and then all of a sudden, yeah. reliably... It comes together and you experience that thing, and that's and that go, is oh. the scientific method. It's a repeatable experience, right? And it's it's some and it's and and, and the cool thing about it is, you know, well, the problem with, with our scientific method here in the in, in the western in, in the western world is that there's no secondary sort of experiment done to back up the research of the first one, right? So like they go, oh well, seven out of ten women are are um, are open to you know. Um, Genital mutilation. Well, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if they drink red wine after seven p.m., right? Well, yes, you can you can manipulate the data to get those results. Yeah. But if I come behind you, and 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 test out your experiment, and and I, I re I rerun this data, I get no I get no reward. There's no Nobel Prize for 
for for for you know testing your data, right? So like we have all these like scientific experiments that that you can find any study that can support anything you want. The cool thing is when you're doing earth medicine, you have 10, 15 people there. You have test subjects, 15 test subjects right there. Yeah. Who are who are all experiencing the same thing. So it's not a hallucination. And I, I tell people they go, "Oh, I don't want to hallucinate." They go, "Hallucination means that you see a dragon and I see a unicorn." Yeah. If if I see the same unicorn you do, it's not a hallucination. Right. <laughs> right. You know, so Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's this and then you build your own information based upon that. I mean right. the idea of someone just telling you what's best for you and I think both government and religion have a bad habit of doing this. And that's yeah. you know, yeah. the scheduling and these are oh, we know what's best for you. Oh, you wanna do something that we don't think is best for you, well, we'll throw you in a cage. Like, that's better for you. Right. That's right. the most insane. Like, that's we're really going to look at that. We're going to look at people getting thrown in jail for taking, like, acid or mushrooms and be like, so wait, 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 wait. There was, you let somebody say that throwing you in a cage with rapists was better for you, was better for you than doing <laughs> this thing yeah. that the science <laughs> all said was good for you, produced right. reliably top experiences, helped right. with them. Or, oh. or how about this? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> if I want to drink Drano, yeah, let me. Okay, thin out the dating pool. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, listen. You 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 you, you want to smoke paint? Go ahead. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Right. Right. Go ahead. Knock yeah, yourself who owns, out. Who owns us? Right. So it's like I I we you should throw people in cages for violent crimes for hurting other people. Understandable. Understandable. Yeah. But, if the, but a criminal justice reform has to happen now because i mean how, how are we the freest nation on the planet with the most people incarcerated like that's just we're so we're so we're so we, we attach so much importance on being right but we contradict ourselves in every single yeah, way we're, we're, we the, we're the most paradoxical nation it's, for sure it's, we're, the, it's we're the fattest nation and the fittest nation right you know we're like the freest nation and the most and have the most people in jail and the you richest know, and like, the poorest in some ways yeah. yeah it's the weirdest it's the weirdest kind of it's am- amalgamation that we've it's created and i think Wait, which 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 to, to your point and to that point means we can do anything yeah but why but why are we doing it that way i don't know like that that's well people a, have blocked off the software download you know and all of these structures yeah. like organized religion and these different kind of mechanisms they're designed to block off that structure say no no no, don't think don't use our brain i remember pharmaceutical I went, drugs yeah. pharmaceutical drugs those yeah. those actually chemically block it off yeah, yeah, like yeah. literally cut off your supply to the download so it's yeah. like you're running an old an old iphone that won't plug into the to the internet right. anymore right. and it's just like, getting buggier oh you got an ipod buggier classic and huh? buggier. That's cool. yeah yes exactly still will try to give me a cd yeah i go what's, what's that <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, i don't i don't Mm-mm, I got a software update, sweetheart. I don't know. What yeah, is. exactly. Like, and but people people can't plug in; they can't get that download right. anymore. And I think that's the that's the state we're in. And then these structures, like major news organizations, they just manipulate. They know the levers. Oh, here's the fear lever. Let's right. press that lever every day. Here's the greed lever every day. Let's press that lever. Let's just keep pressing these different levers. Here's the addiction lever. Yeah. Let's press that. Let's give them more sugar in this thing. Let's. So they've learned how to press all these buttons for their own for their own needs and it's gotten us to this weird spot but the thing is now that this collective dimension that we're creating this mm. sharing of information through social and the internet it's waking people up fast right and that's right. what's really what's really promising and, and that it's exciting that's yeah. ex- that, that like, i i have a lot of hope here's the thing i've worked on, on on both obama campaigns i've worked on bernie sanders campaign now i've traveled the entire united states for both of these candidates. And, and now that it looks like Hillary Clinton's gonna get it, I, I will do it for her too. Um, but what I learned was that it gave me hope. And it sounds really corny in one of the cases, but it really gave me hope that we're getting to a point now that these little things don't matter so much, right? And that the big things are gonna be questioned. And they're gonna be questioned by millions of voices all at once and the information is going to be shared quickly and yeah we have a lot of misinformation we have a lot of this and that and so on and so forth yeah of course anytime you like you create a forum where people where people can can share ideas there's going to be a lot of bullshit but truth cuts through 
Truth ultimately wins. It ultimately wins. Yeah. And, I, and I'm I glad have, we have a forum for that. I agree. I have way less faith than you in the political system. <laughs> I think you, should, I you think, should do a podcast with my dad. Like yeah. he, he, he'll, he'll, he'll restore your faith in some ways. I'd like to, I'd like yeah. to have my faith restored just because I feel like they're, they're always a lagging instrument. Mm-hmm. Like the people move and then politicians react when absolutely compelled and necessary. And I, and I agree with you. Uh, but this is also what my, my, because of my time on the ground in yeah. the last six to eight years, I've created this political app that will come out in the next year and a half, two years. And it's using the form that we have in the right way. Mm-hmm. And, and I figured out kind of how to hack the political system and, and, and this is going to restore your faith. Trust me. This, this, will, this will, if, if you don't have any Look, faith, as yet, I said, I'm fluid. This, this, will, this will do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm, but, no, but you're I'm open. skeptical. You're definitely I'm open. definitely open. Listen, I, I'm, when it comes to politics, that is the one thing. I am very skeptical about politicians in our political system. However, I am very optimistic about people's need and hunger for truth. Totally. Justice, equality. That is something that, that can't be questioned. I agree. They, they're hungry for that. And I, you know, I think if you're talking about like, let's say we created this video game, right. you know, like what, it's a a fun cool, game. what a cool fun game. world we're in. We're in this world where things are changing rapidly and we have this massive oppressive force, but we also have this burgeoning resistance. It's like, it's really like the plot, you know, with yeah. a little less, you know, shooting an actual, well, actually probably not on a global scale, There's a lot of shooting. <laughs> but you know, but for most of us at least, but yeah, yeah. it's, you know, we've created this system where the odds are significantly stacked against us, but we have yeah. this powerful resistance brewing that if we contribute to it can grow and grow and ultimately succeed. Or, you know, maybe we just played a hell of a run and didn't, didn't win the game. That's yeah. cool. Cause there really is no winning or losing. It's after this game, there'll be a new game. There's right. always going to be resistance. It's just a matter of how much, we can enjoy and draw from life by playing it. Right. And, and, and to that point, you know, it's like, that's, that's it, it, that if you, when you look at it the way that you do, it makes life fun. Yeah. And this shit's supposed to be fun. Like, what are you doing with your life? If it's not fun, like, <laughs> like why are you in a marriage that you hate? Why are you at a job that you hate? Like why you can just say, you know what? Reset. Yeah. It's Thursday done done with that one this is no no thanks you know i'm getting the ulcer you're giving me an ulcer lady (laughs) or this job's giving me an ulcer stop just stop just stop everybody just needs to be happy that's the point just just be happy this kind of acceptable loss mentality where everybody gets together and complains about an institution like everybody gets together complains about the job everybody gets together complains about their institution of marriage like why you don't have to do it why you create a new system yeah, like, like why are you engaging? But but because so many other I hate people this do sandwich, but I'm gonna eat <laughs> yeah, it though. Yeah, exactly. I'm not even hungry. I hate it. What? I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's weird, but that's what that's what people do. They just yeah. say, "All right, this is it. Marriage is supposed to suck in these certain ways." Well, right. create a new marriage. I never create got, a new marriage. I, it's, it's so interesting to me. Like I have buddies who 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 you know have weddings coming up. Or have had like weddings in the last couple of years, and they go, "Yeah, man, it's the best thing and the worst thing." I'm like, "What? What do you mean?" They're like, "Yeah, well." Or I've had a buddy go, "Never get married." I was I've like, had "Tons of them say that." And I go, "I go, why are you?" Oh, well, I mean, you know, I'm like, "You've only been married for two years. You've only been married for a year. Like, what are you t- like? You're miserable. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, you know, uh, what do you mean? Well, you know, <laughs> get out." Stop. You're 30 something years old. Get the hell out of there. What are you doing? Change Stop. the agreement. Change. But people get fixed. And that's the thing. Like once you're in that, it's so woven. And that's one of those hard blocks that you see yeah. in a lot of different people. Like this is what you're supposed to do. This right. is what this is what this whole thing means. The diamond ring, the ceremony. That's why you get all these crazy bridezillas. Like we were down in Mexico. Beautiful. Weather's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we we're we we're with another couple out there. And they were talking about they were talking about this bride just bawling on the morning of her wedding because some trivial bullshit right. went wrong with the wedding planner. Just like her day. My rice ruined. cakes weren't cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But you have so much attached into this crazy idea. Right. It's like, what? What, do you, what are we it, doing here? What kind of charade are we playing? Are you observing? Are you saying, oh, look, 
the bride is all sad. <laughs> you know, like you're not oh. doing that. You're in the See, moment. See, that's the kind of groom real. I'll be. I'll be like, oh, look at them bitch ass tears. <laughs> oh, and then well, I wouldn't get married, and then everything would be shitty. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm single. <laughs> Oh man, that's great though. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I never got that. I never understand. I, I want kids. Definitely want kids. Definitely want to be a father. Uh, marriage, I, I just think it's an institutionalized sort of. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm about to say this. I think that I think that marriage is a definitely how it started, and and definitely how a lot of people view it is an institutionalized, acceptable way to degrade women. It's an interesting perspective, and I think yeah. there's certainly yeah. some support with it. You know, yeah. it's this kind of, it's still this ownership mentality, Correct. and it's just yeah. a lot of the game has been convincing the people who are yeah. a part of this to, to that's want the best, it. That's the best, that's thing, the best thing, for you. thing for them. That the best thing for you is to be able to... Um, to lock down your man and get the, yeah, yeah, or, or just have his prince his. charming take care of you rather than use your own tools and your own abilities right, to right. create a good life for yourself. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Rather than being like, listen, right. girl, you're a bad motherfucker. Right. You can you can see in as many men yeah. as you want, or you can do your own thing. Like right. whatever you want, whatever do, feels right for you. Whatever feels right is awesome. Not yeah. like when are you getting married? You're getting older. The yeah. biological clock's ticking. All this bullshit. Then have a baby. Divine. All yeah. good. Just make sure you got a good job. Right. It's all good. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, and, and I think you don't need to throw out the whole concept of marriage. Just no. create it the create it the way yeah. that you want it. Make it make it have the own your own rules. And that's the thing. There's like there's like two rules. There's there's like, oh you're a weird ass swinger or oh you're married or oh you're single. You know, it's So like, you you and I can attest to this. There there is one there is one level of of, of prejudice that I, I just can't I, I'm so against and I can't vibe with anymore. I I'm against all of them. But it's just like there's one that's acceptable that I don't understand. If you're a single man in your thirties, people either go, "Oh, you're gay," or they go, "Or they go, uh, you you can't, you're just a man child, you can't get it together. Oh, you 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 just you're oversexed. You're this. You're like, wait, maybe I don't want to be married. Maybe I don't want to be married in the way that everybody looks at marriage, and I got to find somebody who looks at it the same way I do. Yeah. Maybe maybe your old ideas don't work for me. And it's just kind of interesting. Like, it's like my parents have finally started to accept that like, oh, well, well, one, you live in L.A. There's a lot of shitty girls out there. <laughs> and then the other thing is like, because every time, like, like the funny thing is like you always tell me, oh, you love Austin girls. I go, yeah, because they're not idiots. <laughs> like they're not, they're not super, super thirsty either. They're not dehydrated. Um, and... Um, then it's also like my even my great aunt and my grandmother like they're like you know like my great aunt's 83 years old 84 and my my my, my grandmother's 87 and like you know you don't have to get married i go yeah i know <laughs> she was like because sometimes just there's certain men who just shouldn't be i go yeah i know yeah. i go that's why i'm not and certain women because <laughs> i wouldn't be either yeah you know and that's Same it's thing. like especially if you're if you're a female in your 30s Alpha's, people are asking you yeah. What's wrong with you? Right. What's I mean, wrong with what? Nothing's wrong with me, nothing, motherfucker. Like I'm fine. I have I'm more. Good. I have more options than you. That's what's wrong with me. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, like I have a different framework. Maybe ask what's right with me. Yeah, right. Maybe ask what's my secret. Did you ask if I was happy first before right. you asked? Exactly. Yeah. That's what was wrong with me. Like I'm so miserable in my marriage. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that slowly <laughs> to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of interesting, but I, I'm not hating on marriage. Well, uh, it's just all the world's institutions are up for change. These things that are fixed are becoming fluid. Our and old ideas, yeah. All old the ideas. old ideas, everything that we've become software attached updates. to. A lot of software updates coming, yeah. man, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Me happy too. to have fucking yeah. met you and be able to do this with you, though, man, because it's fun yeah. to have a brother of the way. You know, we don't yeah. always get to hang, but you know, every time we can come back and tell stories and. Uh, and have some fun, man. And I can I can honestly say this. Uh, I, I've never said this to Aubrey's face, probably, and, 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 and to all of Aubrey's fans. I would not be the man I am today without this guy. And I thank you. Thanks, I, I thank you for expanding my consciousness and always sort of pushing me in that direction and uh, and making me take a look in the mirror every now and then and making me better, man. Like uh, It's great to have a brother like you. Thank you, brother. And, and yeah. I can say the same, man. It's always It's always great to have a mirror. Yeah, man. Yeah.
For sure. It's a great man. How can people follow you? How can people find you? Where should they look? It's very simple. Uh, at Makad Brooks, M E H C A D B R W O K S. Get it right. Most people say M E C H. That's part of the problem. <laughs> but it's Makad, M E H C A D uh, Brooks. And just like that's all my social media uh, Twitter and, uh, and Instagram. I got some really funny stuff coming up there. So just did Sweet. a bunch of funny videos and, you know, just trying to keep it light, man. It's just life should be fun and. Full of smiles. Yeah, so. more smiles. Check out Supergirl, yeah. too. Please we gotta, do. We got to get to season three. Oh, we, oh we, you know what? Here's the thing, man. I, I'm hoping we get to season 11. <laughs> That's what's up. Daddy's trying to get by the lake. <laughs> Daddy's trying to buy the lake over here. <laughs> Have Sybil and the girlfriends come over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome. Meet Sybil on the uh, Off yeah. Markets podcast. Yeah. She's my lovely assistant. Yeah. <laughs> she is now a featured role along with yep. Orlando yeah. in the podcast. So from here on out, your guests always have to like just, <laughs> yeah. you know, like she's, she's like Sybil. Beetlejuice. Sybil, turn the Facebook Live around just so people, just so people can see it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Much love. Thank you, brother, for coming on. My brother, I love you, man. Love you too.